people look at stories through different lenses. I have my own take on some of these trending issues. Hi, I'm Mariah Ramharak and welcome to In Case You Missed It. And welcome to a brand new episode of In Case You Missed It on Sportsmax and Scene TV. Well, it's my absolute pleasure to be joined in studio by a man who represented the West Indies from 1984 to 2001, captaining the West Indies in 22 test matches. Let's welcome to the studios of Sportsmax in Kingston, Jamaica, Courtney Walsh. Courtney, how are you doing? I'm so happy that you could actually come to studio. I'm very good and I'm happy to be in the studio. It's <laughs> easier than being on the Zoom because you have to worry about all these technicalities. So I'm happy to be here. And then we get to see you. I mean, couldn't ask for more than that, right? No. So that's why I said to you, it's studio that can work. <laughs> yeah. So what have you been up to, you know? Have you been looking at the World Cup? I've watched a couple of games. I've watched the West Indies two games. I've watched a bit of the Pakistan-India game. I watched first half and a little bit of the back end. I watched USA Canada, which was the opening. I watched all of that game, which was uh, something I wanted to do. And I think the two teams that I wanted to see play the first game, what happened. To me, it was a very good game of cricket um, to have those two teams playing. And the USA came out on top, was good. Yeah, and of course, as a former West Indies cricketer, um, what are your <laughs> thoughts on you know how West Indies have been carrying out their duties? I'm happy to see how they've played. Um, I was hoping for Probably a more clinical win against you know, our first opponent, but you need to win the games. I think the second game was much better. They sort of showed the, the worth and the weight. Uh, the, the team is at full strength now. I think it's a nice balanced squad that was selected. I was very pleased with the squad I saw selected. Um, a lot of people asked about two left arm spinners. Yeah. But if they're bowling well, then why not? You know, don't just pick a spinner for the sake of having a spinner. If your two left arm spinners are bowling well, then, then select them. And, I think those guys have proven the work. I like the depth and seamers that we have. And obviously the batting is, is to me, is, is, is a key point where a lot of the strength is, as long as you play smart cricket. So I'm very happy with the squad that was selected. Right, so you know you outlined a lot of the strengths of the squad. Your thoughts on, of course, former Windy skipper Darren Sammy leading the chat. Well, I mean, he has done one, two World Cup. Him being in the coach, he knows what it's like to win cups. So obviously that a big plus of his experience there. And I think that with his, you know, sort of input and work ethic and knowing what to expect, expect with, it, with his expectation and um, giving the guys the roles that they need to play. And once they adapt and understand that and play to the roles, then we have a very, very good chance. And I'm really expecting us to go deep into this World Cup and it will be great to get into the finals. I love getting into finals because that's the only chance you have of winning it. Uh, but the guys have to play some good, smart cricket and they have shown that Big improvement in the first game to the second game in terms of how clinical they were. I think the next couple of games are going to be real testing games because yeah. that's when you're coming up against teams that if you win those games, you guarantee you a, a berth in the super hit. Yeah, and I'm going to ask you to put on your coaching hat here a bit. Would you have done anything differently based on what we saw in the first two matches? Well, I think they did it in the second match. They were more clinical. Yeah, the first match probably a bit ring rusty and stuff, but you want to see the batters dominate a little bit more against that, that, you know, that type of bowling and stuff. Um, but you want to see people carrying out the role. And even in the second game, I was expecting us to get a little bit more runs. I would have been happier to, you know, 180 or 190, closer to 200. Because that's all you wanted to sort of gauge yourself. But you have to give credit. The Uganda bowlers, they bowled pretty well at the depth. They, they, they surprised me with the way they bowled yeah. at the depth. The Yorkers, they nailed the Yorkers, they, you know. So maybe the batters could have moved, tried to manipulate a little better. But you have to give credit where it's due. They did bowl the last two or three overs were excellent. And I think that restricted us quite a lot. Yeah, and you know, I love asking players that have, would, have, would have gone through this before, like former players like yourself, are you pleased with the direction that West Indies cricket is heading? Well, I'm not 100% sure about the direction. I'm going to be honest with you, because I have, okay. I, I'm not insight into what's happening. I'm pleased with oh, the, the commitment I'm seeing from the guys who are playing now. I'm pleased with the squad that was selected. I don't know the long-term plans are, 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 of what's happening. Um, so you know, when that is unfold, then you can look at it. But I'm happy with what I saw, you know, they played the test series in, in Australia. And with what is happening with this, the T20 against South Africa in Savannah Park first. And now looking at the, the World Cup to see the squad. And 
how, how things are looking together. So I'm happy with the, the, the performances that are, that are coming through. And you know, you say that, um, Courtney, and I, I start thinking to myself, the lack of involvement, if I'm to say that, about former players um, when it comes to the direction of cricket. Mm -hmm. Do you ever feel as if, you know, mm -hmm. you would like to play um, a bigger role when it comes to this current Windies team and of course shaping the future of Windies cricket? Well, why I smile and laugh is that when I was in Bangladesh, um, I was told that you know, when I finished there, I said I wanted to be in the system here in whichever way, shape or form to help. Yeah. Obviously, I got the, I applied for the job and by default because the person who got the job didn't take up the mantle. So I was made head coach for the women's team for two seasons, which I quite enjoyed. Yeah. But I think more or less the involvement of us in this cricket is something that I wanted to do, to be involved, to see what you know what you can do and learn while you're on the job, yes, but also help the youngsters coming through. Um, that did materialize. Um, so in terms of me being involved, yes, I would have loved to have been involved with Western cricket if I could have or if I was afforded the opportunity. Not just with the women, but with the men as well. But that didn't happen. So all I can do from a distance is wish Western cricket well. As you, you know, I've done other stuff overseas as well, so um, I watch from a distance, I observe from a distance, but I don't know a lot of what's happening and I, I just sort of keep my distance. I mean, as this World Cup, as big as this World Cup is, nobody came to say, well, is there anything you would like to do or be a part of the World Cup? Um, I think if I had played for a different country with the record that I have, I probably would have. Uh, but I'm going to Miami the Fort Lauderdale tomorrow. Yeah. Um, they've invited me as a special guest to an event they're having there to watch Westerns versus New Zealand, but they see it fit to bring me up to this event and to honor me as well in some way, way shape or form, so I'm happy to do so. And then I'll make my plans to go up to England. So it's not a case of not wanting to be involved in Westerns cricket, but you can only do as much as you're asked or, you're, or as much as they involve you. Yeah. So I, I'm not involved, so I just wish it well from a distance and do whatever I can on the outside. So what I'm getting is another entity is inviting you, not um, the West Indies entity. Yeah, another entity, USA Cricket is inviting me up. Um, so I'm going to go up as a guest. Uh, I think we have someone like Baby Sham performing. We're going to watch the cricket. But just to, just to be invited and to be involved, I mean... You feel good, I mean, yeah. Exactly. You know, because you, you, as people keep saying, a king never gets anything in his own home, so I heard the excuse that because Jamaica didn't bid for the, for the World Cup. But Jamaica didn't play for Jamaica, I played for the West Indies. So, you know, it's, it's, it's sad that as someone who has served the region so well, um, they, they didn't see it fit to have me involved in anything to do with this type of, the World Cup, so to speak. It's not just a mini, it's a world event. And as I, I'll say that I was once a world record holder. Correct. So, um, it's a world event and no involvement, but that's how it is. I'm not knocking what they have done, they've got their vision, so just wish them well and do whatever I can do from a distance. Yeah. Well, but I still love us in cricket, that's it. And I still follow the fortunes of the youngsters. It's in I your still blood. Follow the women's. It's in my blood. <laughs> and it will never come out of the blood. I just keep doing it from a distance. Yeah, and of course when another opportunity arises, I know, you know, we'll be looking forward to see you in whatever capacity that is that you can serve. Now, let's talk about these associate teams because coach, they've been lighting up the World Cup. Are you surprised by, I know you briefly mentioned it, but like, let's just say how USA has gone about their business. They're really proving that they belong in this World Cup. They have shown the worth. <laughs> so you can't underestimate any team. You've got to play each team on merit and be prepared for teams to come and give you a good run for your money, so to speak. USA have proven that. I mean, yeah. they have won good games, but they have also played very good cricket, smart yes. cricket. Um, look, as I said, Uganda, the way they bowl to the Westerns at the back end, I didn't expect that. So they are prepared, they have done the work, they've prepared themselves and they're up for the task. So there's no minors in this World Cup, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Every team you've got to treat them with, with respect and credit. If there's to be an upset in this T20 World Cup, where is it coming from? I think we've had one already when the, when the USA upset Pakistan. I don't think anybody expected that to no. happen. No. So that was the first upset. But don't be surprised if there are, there's others. Yeah. Don't be surprised. The Canadian team played some good cricket. Um, they, they probably lack with depth. But, I mean, <laughs> this World Cup, anything could happen. So don't underestimate anything. Yeah, and you know, there has been a lot of discussion surrounding the pitch conditions. Mm -hmm. What's your take on that? If I put on my bowling cap, I'm happy with the pitches. Uh, but <laughs> yeah. I think everybody, everybody wants to see stroke play. They yeah. want to see flat pitches. 
I just think it's unfair for bowlers that you can bowl your best ball and it's still this one. The challenge and the contest is what I like. So I'm not going to knock. Yes, you want some of these pitches could be a little bit better, but I have no issue with pitches that are trying to get a balance of the game. Yeah. A little bit in it for the bowlers and more for the batters, fine, but at least have something in it for the bowlers. So these pitches have a little bit in it for the bowlers and we've seen a little bit more contests. You've got to put your head on a little bit more and play good cricket. Yeah. But like even in yesterday's game, I know India came out and won in the end, but I still think they could have been a little bit smarter based on where they were to get 15, 20 runs more. Pakistan had a very good start and they could have done a lot better to win the game. So that is the test that you want to see. People not sort of buckling under pressure. Or it's just easy, you can just hit through the line and dominate, so to speak. For far too long, I think, and this is my personal view, the bat in T20 cricket has dominated the ball because that's what the spectators want to see. Yeah. This is a more of a contest. You still see sixes being hit, but at least the bowlers know if they hit the right area, they have a chance as well. And that's what you want. You know, I always say I was born in the wrong era because I never get to see people like you bowl. Um, I would have loved to see you bowling now, especially in these conditions. Good conditions. I would love to be born in these conditions because there's a little bit in it. You hit the right areas. It's a contest for the bat between bat and ball. And that's what you want. Yeah. You want the contest between bat and ball. All right. So your team to win the 2024 World Cup? I'm West Indian. I can't pick any other team before the West Indies. Um, yeah. If you say India and Australia might have a chance, just yes, they do have a chance, but the team I want to see win is, is West Indies, yeah. without a doubt. West Indian to the bone. Well, to the bone. So, coach, you have joined Zimbabwe's women's team as a coaching consultant as they get ready to challenge for a spot at the ICC Women's T20 World Cup in Bangladesh later this year. How excited are you for this upcoming assignment? Well, it was a very exciting time to be around and to be involved with it. We actually went to Dubai, so to speak. Okay. Um, unfortunately, we didn't make it to go to Bangladesh because the team didn't qualify. But the learning experience and just being able to see good cricket play again and to be a part of it was, was very exciting for me. I enjoyed it. And um, as they've said in Zimbabwe, once there's an opportunity, they'll you know, tap into my resources. And it was a good working relationship. Um, and. The exposure was good, so things yeah. like these opportunities will come and I'll just do the best I can with it when, when the opportunity arises. Yeah, and your thoughts on the crop of Zimbabwe players because they've never played at a Women's T20 World Cup and they'll be missing out on the opportunity again. Yeah, they'll miss out again, but I think it's a, a, it's a tremendous learning curve for them. Um, you know, we have, I've given them some information to work with. Um, we have had some good ongoing discussion and I think they're determined to try to get into the World Cup, which is very good. So I think they're going to plan and plot the way forward from here to try to get into that World Cup because, as you said, they have never, but it's something that means a lot to them and to their cricket. So they're going to try and put in as much resources as they can to try to get involved in the next World Cup. Yeah, and in the first segment, we mentioned briefly that, of course, you were the head coach of the West Indies women's team from 2020 to 2023. What are some of the things that you would have learned working with our Windies women? And how pleased are you also with the ladies and how they are going about their duties? I'm very pleased, very pleased to have been involved with it, very pleased to have been able to pass on something to them um, that they would have you know, take to move forward. And I watch the team play from time to time. I still follow the girls because I have an interest. I mean, you don't just be involved with a setup and then disappear. So, you know, I, I watch them play. I support them wholeheartedly. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to watch them in the Caribbean because I wasn't able to. If I'm anywhere that they're playing, I'll go you and go, watch. You yeah. go, yeah. I'll go and watch and so forth because I feel very close to them and stuff. I was very impressed with the way how Haley has carried herself, both as captain and as player. And then all the rest of the team has been gelling around her. So it was, it's very, very good to see. Um, the World Cup is coming up in Bangladesh. Yes. And I'm hoping that they can, you know, go as far as possible and make it to the finals. You have a, I just keep saying finals. You have a good <laughs> chance of winning if you're in the finals. So I'll be watching them. I'll be supporting the team. Um, Bangladesh, I've, I've been there. I spent three years down there, so I know a little bit about the conditions. Okay. So, you know, if any of them f feel free to reach out, the advice will be passed on. But... Coaching is something I've always enjoyed. I, I'm actually going to the, the Oval again for my second stint with the Oval Invincible Women. Okay. Um, it's not a case that I've selected just to work with women, but that's the opportunity that has come about. Yeah. So I just want people to know, even in Zimbabwe, that's, that's, they were saying it's a possibility you could do some work with the men's team. That is still open. So yes, I'm happy to work with the women, but I still would not turn on any opportunity to work with, some, with the men as well. So 
Um, I'm looking forward to going to the Oval. The good thing when I'm at the Oval is that last year I was very close to both teams, male and female. Okay. Because we practiced together. So you were able to watch both teams practice and share thoughts and it was a good vibe. So I'm hoping that the same. I was new last year. I'm a little bit more seasoned this year and I'm hoping to mingle a little bit more with the men's team and they're working out as well, as, much, as well as with the women's team. Who's more difficult to coach, men or women? Um, it's a tough question. Um, it's not difficult, it's understanding personalities, I think. I think you have to have a better understanding for the woman part of it because of circumstances, so to yeah, speak. Yeah. So it, it's not difficult, it's just understanding at the time what's happening and what you need to do. But they're both good to coach. Yeah. And speaking about that, CPL, just around the corner, you know, before you know it, it will be here. Last season, you coached the Ghana Amazon Warriors, the women's team. Can we expect to see you back again this season? Yes, yes, I'm involved. I'm involved with them. I'm expecting to be back this season. Um, we trying to put together a nice, good squad again as well. You know, all the girls played fantastically last year. Unfortunately, we didn't sort of lift the trophy. To but the quality of the cricket from all the so teams good. was very good. And I think that is, the, that is what we want. We want to have good quality cricket in the region, very competitive, you know, and if we can get that going again, similar to what we did last year, I think that in itself is a tremendous success. Um, so I'm looking forward to that, and it's going to be in August, right after the 100, so I'll journey down and hopefully we'll have good entertaining cricket again and, you know, the teams will play well. And as I said, if Guyana can make it to the finals again, I'll be very, very happy because we'll have a chance of lifting the trophy. Right, and the men won the trophy for the first time last year, so it would be a big deal if the woman can walk away with a title, especially with you as a coach. Yes, it would be. <laughs> it would be. So last year we were really hoping to get to, to, to do that. Yeah. It didn't happen, but we came close. Quality cricket was played, and I think you know we, we respected our opposition, but we know that we could have done it. But they played better on the day and they deserve to top on it. But it would be nice. I'm not going to hide that. It would be nice to win something with Guyana. Yeah. And this year is <laughs> going to be challenging, but we're up for the challenge again. It's now time for my favorite part of today's interview. It's what we call here rapid fire time. So I'll ask you a question and you say the first <laughs> word or phrase that comes to mind. Are you ready? I'd have to be ready. I was born ready, I think. <laughs> All right. 500 wickets or a World Cup win? Well, I have 500 wickets already, so a World Cup win. <laughs> All right. Well, of course, very, very humble. He already has 500 wickets, so why not take a World Cup win? Your most memorable moment as a cricketer? Mm, Australia, beating Australia by one run at Adelaide. Yeah, wow. Now, your fondest memory as a coach? Hmm... Get into the semi-final with the West Indies women's team. Yeah, big, big the, moment. Big moment. The most challenging batsman you faced as a bowler? There's a few, uh, but I have two names, yeah. Tendulka and Steve Waugh. Okay. Oh, I can't, you know, I look back at those clips, coach, and as I always say, I wish I could have got the opportunity to see that happen live, but... <laughs> Well, your most difficult team you faced during your playing days? I would say Australia. Okay. Which cricketer do you enjoy watching in 2024? In 2024, Virat Kohli batting, Bumra bowling, from an in the perspective. Those two <laughs> Love it. are good standouts. Yeah. Which cricketer did you truly admire during your playing days? Michael Olden as a bowler. And Viv Richards as a batsman. And if you had to change one thing about your playing career, what would that be? I'll work more on my batting. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All rounder. All rounder. Yeah. One team you would love to coach in the future, I'm talking about. In the future, I would have loved to have coached a Western team at any point in time. Men, Men that is, but yeah. it didn't happen. Well, it can. We, we don't know. <laughs> we don't know what the future has in store. And which team will win the ongoing T20 World Cup? I feel I know the answer. I'm right? picking the West Indies because it's in my blood. And I mean, until we're <laughs> thinking, there's two teams I follow fully. And okay. I say it now. 
West Indies cricket and Brazil football. Okay. Apart from the regular boys when they're playing. Yeah. Even though I didn't like the last match, but I don't know. <laughs> but that's a topic for another day. Now another I know day. that, of course, I can bring you in as a football analyst because you yes. can watch it. I will come as any analyst because I'm a sports fanatic okay. from time to time. Yeah, love that. Well, let's head across to social media now to see what's been trending. What do we have here? So this one is from Anmar Goodrich Boyce. He says, People will say it's Uganda. I covered the pre-match press conference yesterday with Roston Chase. He made it abundantly clear that this is the World Cup and the West Indies will not be underestimating any teams. This is the perfect attitude and mentality. So he's just talking about the World Cup right now and how West Indies went about winning against Uganda. Anything you want to say? And Roston Chase, he's been a hit. He's been a hit. He's been a very good cricketer. I've always had a lot of time for him. Calm head on his body. Very talented cricketer. I think sometimes underrated because yeah. he's not as flamboyant and looking as others, but he can get the job done. Um, what he said there is exactly what you need to do. You can't underestimate any team and they'll get prepared for, for it. And once the players play the roles, they'll give us a very good chance. But I'm, as I keep saying, I'm happy with the sort of squad we have selected because yeah. he didn't even bat in the last game, which was good thinking and because won. we didn't need him because, because of the way the state of the game was. We need power hitters at the back end that came in. Andrea Russell came and did exactly what was required. It just shows the depth of the team. Yeah, yeah. This is one of the few times, you know, um, on the show that I sit on, many people are pleased with the squad, you know, not complaining as much. Most times, we get so many voice notes. They're upset at everything that happens. But yeah, this time, people are actually okay with the team. I, I think the massive are, but um, sometimes they're not. But as I said, if it was, if the squad wasn't, if there was anybody, I think could have been in the squad. There might be people on the outside, but I think this, you know, sometimes we don't give the selectors their due course and respect. And I think this squad that they selected is as good. good as we could have for the World Cup. So I'm very happy. Yeah, let's take another graphic from social media. So Courtney can respond. So Jordizel says, rally around the West Indies now and forever. Well, I know you agree with that. Always, <laughs> always rally. Yeah, another one. And Windy's Cricket posted this, a top five moment, Akil Hussein's performance is the second best bowling performance in T20Is and the best at a T20 World Cup for the West Indies. He was really good he in that match. He was very, very, very good. He was pumped up. You could see that he was enjoying what he was doing was relaxed as well, which is key. Cause you, those are the two things. You need to be enjoying it and you need to be relaxed. And he was both, but he bowled extremely well. Yeah, well, Coach, you know, I want to thank you so much for joining me on today's show. I'm looking forward to chatting with you again soon. I hope you don't remain a stranger to Sportsmax and that we can hear from you very often. Know that I'm in the studio and I like what I'm seeing and the <laughs> feel of it. Yes, no problem. Call on me anytime, you know. Yeah. Get me on the books. Yeah, <laughs> sounds good. Right. Looking forward to talk to you really, really soon. No well, problem. folks, that's a wrap for today's episode of In Case You Missed It. Be sure to like, share and comment and let me know what you thought about today's interview. Goodbye for now.